all the way down. Act 5, scene 1, Titus, still Christmas Eve. Flourish. Enter Lucius with an army of Goths with drums and soldiers. Approve it, warriors and my faithful friends. I have received letters from Great Rome which signifies with hate they bear their emperor and how desirous of our sight they are. Therefore, great lords, be as your title's witness, imperious and impatient of your wrongs. And wherein Rome hath done you any scath, let him make treble satisfaction. Brave slips sprung from the great Andronicus, whose name was once our terror, now our comfort, whose high exploits and honorable deeds in grateful Rome requites with foul contempt. Be bold in us. We'll follow where thou leadst, like stinging bees in hottest summer's day, led by their master to the flowered fields, and be avenged on cursed Tamra. And as he saith, and as he saith, so say we all with him. I humbly thank him, and I thank you all. But who comes here, led by a lusty god? Enter a god, <coughs> leading of Aaron, with his child in his arms. <coughs> Renowned Lucius, from our troops I strayed to gaze upon a ruinous monastery. And as I earnestly did fix mine eye upon the wasted building, suddenly I heard a child cry underneath a wall. I made unto the noise, when soon I heard the crying babe controlled with this discourse. Peace, tiny slave! <coughs> Half me and half thy dam. I almost lost it Did not thy hue be wry, whose brat thou art, and nature lent thee but thy mother's look? Villain, thou mightst have been an emperor. But where the bull and cow are both milk white, they never do beget a cold black calf. Peace, villain, peace. Even thus he rates the babe. For I must bear thee to the trusty goth, who, when he knows thou art the empress' babe, will hold thee dearly for thy mother's sake. With this my weapon drawn, I rushed upon him, surprised him suddenly, and brought him hither, to use as you think needful of the man. O oh, worthy God, this is the incarnate devil that robbed Andronicus of his good hand. This is the pearl that pleased your empress' eye, and here is the base fruit of her burning lust. Say, wall-eyed slave, whither wouldst thou convey this growing image of thy fiend-like face? Why dost not speak? <laughs> what, death? Not a word? A halter, soldiers, hang him on this tree, and by the side is fruit of bastardy. Oh, touch not the boy. He is of royal blood. <laughs> Too like the sire for ever being good. No, but first hang the child that after see it sprawl. <laughs> A sight to vex the father's soul with all. Give me a ladder. A goth brings a ladder. Which Aaron is made to climb. Oop, be very careful with York. York, my trusty friend here. Very fragile. As he breaks it, of course. Lucius, save the child. And bear it from me to the Empress. If thou do this, I'll show thee wondrous things that highly may advantage thee to hear. If thou wilt not befall what may befall, I'll speak no more, but vengeance rock you all. Say on. And if it please me, which thou speak'st, the child shall live, and I will see it nourished. And if it please thee, why assure thee, Lucius, it will vex thy soul to hear what I shall speak. For I must talk of murders, rapes, and massacres, acts of black night, abominable deeds, complots of mischief, treasons, villainies, ruthful to hear, yet piteously performed, and this shall all be buried in my death, unless thou swear to me, my child shall live. Tell on thy mind, I say to thee, thy child shall live. Swear that he shall, and then I will begin. Who shall I swear by? Thou believest no God? That granted, how canst thou believe an oath? What if I do not? As indeed I do not. Yet for I know thou art religious, and hast a thing within thee called conscience. With twenty popish tricks and ceremonies, which I have seen thee careful to observe. Therefore I urge thy oath, for that I know. An idiot holds his bauble for a god, and keeps the oath 
which by the God he swears, to that I'll urge him. Therefore thou shalt vow by that same God, what God swear it be, that thou adorest and hast in reverence, to save my boy, to nurse and bring him up, or else I will discover not to thee. Even by my God, I swear to thee, I will. First know thou I begot him on the Empress. Oh, most insatiate and luxurious woman! Tut, Lucius! This was but a deed of charity, to that which thou shalt hear of me anon. T'was her two sons that murdered Bassianus. They cut thy sister's tongue, and ravished her, and cut her hands, and trimmed her as thou sawest. O detestable villain, call'st thou that trimming? For she was washed, and cut, and trimmed, and t'was trimmed sport for them which had the doing of it. A barbarous, beastly villain like thyself. Indeed, I was their tutor to instruct them. That coddling spirit had they from their mother, as sure as card as ever won the set. That bloody mind I think they learned of me, as true as dog as ever fought a head. Well, let my deeds be witness of my worth. I trained thy brethren to that guileful hole where the dead corpse of Bassianus lay. I wrote the letter that thy father found, and hid the gold with him that letter mentioned, confederate with the queen and her two sons. And what not done that thou hast cause to rue, wherein I had no stroke of mischief in it? I played the cheater for thy father's hand, and when I had it, drew myself apart and almost broke my heart with extreme laughter. I pried me through the crevice of a wall, when for his hand he had his two sons' heads, beheld his tears and laughed so heartily that both mine eyes were rainy like to his, and when I told the empress of the sport, she sounded almost, she sounded almost at my pleasing tale, and for my tidings gave me twenty kisses. What canst thou say all this and never blush? Aye, like a black dog, as the saying is. Art thou not sorry for these heinous deeds? I, that I had not done a thousand more. Have you ever seen this, Judy? Even now I curse the day, and yet I think few come within the compass of my curse, wherein I did not some notorious ill, as kill a man or else devise his death, ravish a maid or plot a way to do it, accuse some innocent or force and forswear myself. Set deadly enmity between two friends, make poor men's cattle break their nets, set fire on barns and haystacks in the night, and bid the owners quench them with their tears. Oft have I digged up dead men from their graves, and set them upright at their dear friend's door, even when their sorrows almost were forgot, and on their skins, as on the bark of trees, have with my knife carved in Roman letters, Let not your sorrow die, though I am dead. But I have done a thousand dreadful things, as willingly as one would kill a fly, and nothing grieves me heartily indeed, but that I cannot do ten thousand more. Bring down the devil, for he must not die so sweet a death as hanging presently. If there be devils, would I were a devil to live and burn in everlasting fire. So I might have your company in hell, but to torment you with my bitter tongue. So stop his mouth, let him speak no more. Aaron is gagged. Enter Emilius. My lord, there is a messenger from Rome desires to be admitted to your presence. Let him come near. It's almost out of batteries. What? It's almost out of batteries. Okay. Welcome, Emilius. What's the news from Rome? Lord Lucius and you princes of the Goths, the Roman emperor greets you all by me, and for he understands you are in arms, he craves a parley at your father's house, willing you, willing, willing you to demand your hostages, and they shall be immediately delivered. What says our general? Emilius, let the emperor give his pledges unto my father and to mine uncle Mar Marcus, and we will come.